<clears throat> we are now recording. Great. Well, we have five. Five of us. So Laura and Elizabeth. I'm just gonna give it one more minute. John, I think I'll make you host and then uh, or or Phil or who, whoever you want me to, and then somebody will make can make me co-host. Okay. Or actually, and unless you want me to start. Uh, actually, I think last time that happened, I did, wasn't able to like make people allow. Why don't I, I'll just keep it until the, the end, I guess. Okay. So that I can attend to people and you guys All can right. Marcy have will meeting. Need, Marcy will need to share her screen. Anyone else? Um, yep. Okay. It's just Marcy. Okay. We'll do this right now, Marcy. Thanks, Jen. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no problem. All right. Well, uh, one board member coming, but it's a couple minutes after, so I think we'll get started. Um, welcome to our last budget workshop. Um, this has been, I think, a really good process, and I thanks really to the administrative team. Uh, quite frankly, it's been a really good process. I think we have one more decision really to make tonight and I'll sort of go over that and then and then and then move forward with a nod on what we have for the school board meeting next week um, and to to discuss the adopting this budget next week um, you'll see there's a pretty um, our, our goals are on there and um, I've been reading them I guess I should just finish reading them because I've read them every other week so I'll just start with the reading of the goals really quickly uh, to move the district forward with our strategic goal plans plan goals, um, empower students with the academic, personal and social knowledge and skills to build balanced and purposeful lives, ensure equity and access to opportunities for all CAPE students, prioritize the return to full-time in-person learning and support post pandemic academic and social emotional needs of all students. And our budget will reflect a careful examination of line items and consideration of the success and effectiveness of the expenditures in order to provide a fiscally responsible budget. And with that, we've got uh, really only one item to discuss, and then we're going to get into the budget discussion. But first, I think, is it Donna, are you going to give the COVID relief update or is it uh, Marcy? Uh, I don't know. We didn't plan this out. <laughs> <laughs> we knew we would have a presentation on it, but I think it's a pretty up, pretty quick update, but uh, I, we should talk about it. I can if you Go want ahead, me to, Marcy. Donna. Go ahead. Okay, great. Okay, great. So um, the update right now is that we, I think it was last time we talked about the $214,000 that will be available to us. Um, Donna has heard word as of last Friday from her group that potentially there will be money that we can apply to for facilities needs. So we're going to stay tuned for that. That could be some good news for us related to renting our tents and modulars. And who knows if we can sneak some furniture in there? Well, we won't know, but we'll know more information as that comes out. So keep that in the back of your mind. There potentially might be some money that we can apply to for that. But so far right now, it's just the $214,000 that came out of the recent relief um, allocation that mirrors our Title I funds. And we are in the process of um, that moving forward, we'll put that application together to see how that money will be applied. Um, as we go further into this spring and the fall. How's that sound, Donna? Yeah, good. Why don't you talk about health insurance too while you're on a roll? Okay, well, I'm on a roll. So we heard yesterday in the morning, uh, first thing when we arrived to work that the health insurance rates um, for the first time, according to what Elizabeth said, it's been a long time, but they stayed at a flat rate. No, they're not charging us an increase this year for our employer contribution for health insurance, which meant that yesterday we were able to work the numbers uh, again to show you what that would be reflected in tonight's presentation. We had a 4.2% increase for our health insurance rates in our budget from our news that we had received um, two weeks ago, and now we are at a 0% flat rate for our health insurance for our employees, which is huge, considering you, you all have seen this, the amount of the piece of the pie that we pay for contractual services. So that was a nice little, uh, that was a nice bit of news that we received and a nice little um, plot. Oh, 
Oh, we have a Marcy froze. Frozen. Um, yeah, she's frozen. I think she about finished. <laughs> she She's about finished, um, but uh, the good news, and I know you guys know all those, is that we there was zero percent increase in the health insurance, so that allowed the budget to go down even more. We had yep. kept in the four percent. It started at ten percent just as a placeholder, and it's gone. It went down to four when we got a ceiling. That's where we were last at our last meeting, and now that has dropped again to zero. So that is so a before savings, yeah savings yeah, it's of a significant one hundred sixty four thousand. So it's 164,000. And um, I want to just, before we get into the overall discussion of where we are in this budget, um, talk about what that means. And I, Marcy was probably about to do that, um, but there are some slides in, in, your, um, in the packet, um, which as you'll see by, by, uh, by reducing the budget by that amount. And again, what was the exact number again, Donna? And jot it down. Uh, it's 100... 164000 I think it's $160 or something like that. $160. $60. So you'll see in the fifth slide of her packet. <laughs> um, oh, and is it Marcy back? Yeah, it, I was just, you can go if you want to, but I was just about to go to your slide to show where we are now with the reduction of the, an extra $164,000 as it relates so to the total budget. I was yeah. talking along and then all of a sudden everything was frozen. So um, I could, sh uh, let's see, now I'm just able to share my screen. Maybe somebody could uh, make me a host and I can share my screen. Okay, here we go. Yeah, you should be all set. All right, and hopefully I won't freeze again. So let's um, go right into it. So just in case. Um, all right, so I'm going to be from the beginning here. Let me get that into this view. So here we are for fiscal year 21-22 budget proposals. So at the very beginning, um, rewinding back to January, when we first started these budget meetings, January 27th, I think it was the 27th, we were at um, this total budget of 30,598,441, which led us to this increase 7.4 for expenditures and the property tax rate at 7.3. And at that time, this budget included the full amount for the school nutrition deficit, the full amount for the concept design, the full amount for new position requests and a contingencies amount. So that was in January. And then we um, went along, had the process moving along and we started to make decisions. And one of the decisions um, that you all made was to pay half of the school nutrition deficit. And then we came across this great option of short-term financing for the concept design. Health insurance rates at that time dropped from the 10% to the 4.2%. We did a deep dive into line items and administrators. We came up with as many de decreases or changes that we could based on what we saw for expenses and projections. And we also increased the fund balance to 740,000. So at that time, good news, we were down to 30 million, 021237. And that led us to a 5.37% and a 4.05% for property tax rate increase. And then um, this morning, let's see, then we decided to we got the news and we took out the entire decrease um, from the health insurance ceiling. It then dropped from a 10% to a 0%. We still kept half of the school nutrition deficit. We still are doing the short-term financing. We took out the uh, from the 4.2 to the 0%. Then we made contingencies at 247,000, fund balance at 740,000. And we are at, at that point, the 4.8% of an expenditure increase and a 3.45% property tax rate increase. Now, um, Phil and I had a conversation that I included one more slide. And in this slide, let me just go back so you can put your eyes on this one one more time before I go to the next slide. Here we are, 
right now with taking that increase out that we had just talked about from health insurance. So this area right here, and it's a 4.8% increase and a 3.45% increase for property tax rate. Now, if here's another slide for you guys to consider, I just entitled it another budget scenario where I put half of the savings that you just acquired this as of yesterday morning into the contingencies amount. So no, notice down here, the contingencies of 329,000. Now this is a new slide based on um, this afternoon. Bill wanted to make sure you had more information to consider. So I added this slide for you all to see. I added half, just half of that savings into the contingencies to make it 329,000. And it changes your expenditure increase to 5.09% and your property tax rate to 3.78%. The rest of this particular slideshow just shows some of the funding sources, the state subsidy, the fund balance use again. This is where we land with property taxes um, if you take out the entire savings from yesterday morning. I did not adjust this, um, but I would adjust this property tax amount if you go the other way. And this is our grant money, the $214,000 that we will be get getting that we can plan for um, opening or the fall, however that looks. This is a review of all the new position requests. If you want to have it as a reference, I'll also be sending this updated um, for your budget packets, but it's in this it's in your presentation packet, just in case you want to be able to review it again. It shows bottom line, the 475,000. This includes your three math interventionist positions. It includes the EL needs. Um, the, uh, let's see, we have for the um, special services, that position. So the key ones that you're, I know that you're really interested in are the math interventionist positions. Three of them are in this budget in that total. And then we have our great quote at the end, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. So let's go back to, and Phil, do you want me to keep this up while you're talking or do you want me to stop screen sharing for questions to talk about this? Oh, you're on mute. Let me just leave it up for a moment. Um, yes. Could you just remind me one one fact? So under the under the use, if we use all the savings from mm -hmm. the health insurance, the, the slide that you'd previously shown. Yes. Um, what do we have? What does that leave us in contingency for the back? You know, for the fall, which is really a number we arrived at last time. We didn't change it from last time. Right. Yeah. Two hundred forty-seven thousand. Yeah, two hundred forty-seven thousand. Yes. Okay. And that's what would uh, result in the 4.8% increase of the budget from last year with a 3.45% uh, impact tax impact. Correct. And um, then I'll go, yeah. I'll go to the next slide. Your contingency yeah. would be 329,000 with yeah. a 5.09 expenditure increase and a 3.7% property tax rate increase impact. So I just want to kick off a conversation about this. I, I, uh, this was really more for conversation purposes so that we had something to discuss. And maybe you could take the screen down if everyone has seen these numbers and jotted them down. Yes. And come, we can come back to it. Yes. Um, but really just, you know, it's sort of, I think one of our final decision points here where we are at the budget. So this is great news. And we now have $164,000 that we could take that reduced the budget by. And um, my first inclination was it maybe still is, to do what uh, Marcy and Donna put in the slide, which is simply reduce that off of the taxpayer burden and reduce the percentage increase of the budget from 4.8% down to 4.8%. Um, it, it would show <clears throat> a fairly significant drop from last year if you're looking at trend lines as well. And I think it's a good message, uh, particularly as we might go into a um, bond year next year. However, I want to make sure to fully vet that um, with the board because obviously one of our budget goals is to make sure that we're fully prepared to be in, in school next year. And, and what I wanted to sort of ask is, is 
do we have enough of contingency of a $247,000 today? And if we do, that's okay. But if not, my suggestion would be to use some of these savings we just found. And, and it'd just be good to have that conversation. So I, right now, what we have is we have $247,000 in a contingency for these purposes. And we know we're going to get grant funding of approximately the same amount, a little bit less than that, 200 and some thousand dollars in grant funding. So uh, that's what we have. And that, and the good news you just learned is that we may also be able to be reimbursed now from a separate pool of money for various facilities, uh, facilities costs. So outside of our federal uh, grant. Um, so that's the conversation. Does anyone have any thoughts about that? Where we are in terms of budgeting for any kind of uh, expenses related to going back? If we're comfortable where we are with the full amount, um, the amount that we had in there, or should we use some of these savings to bump it up? That's the conversation. Any thoughts about that? Marcy, could you just go over um, once we're so, so it's 247,000 um, in the contingency fund before adding any of the savings, is that right? That's right. And then, um, and then how much would, would we be adding um, if we went the, the route of adding some of the saved money? It was, um, I think it was 82,000 that I, I took half of the savings to bring it to the 329,000 for contingencies. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anyone else have any thoughts about this or, or uh, questions about it? No, but Donna, can you remind me again what the numbers were for the portables if we had to go that route for Pond Cove in the middle okay. school? Yeah, so um, the portables were 70,000 and we had talked about doing one portable at the middle school and two portables at Pond Cove, I believe, or just the opposite. Um, Jason was two. two yeah, two, two yeah. Pond Cove and one at the middle school, yeah. Yeah, no, I think just the opposite, I think, but. Oh, oh, the opposite, okay. Two at the middle school and one at Pond Cove. Um, and then Jason had talked about possibly one or two extra people, uh, staff members, um, to staff those. Troy, I believe, said you didn't need any extra, and Jeff said he didn't need any extra staffing. So thinking about, um, we usually budget about 80 when we don't know, um, you know, who we're hiring about 80,000 per, um, per staff member. So two staff members and three portables. Now that's not including extra, let's see, I think that was, elect, I think for, uh, Perry said that was, I have to look back in my notes. Um, I think it included the utilities. Doesn't include furniture. So we've been talking about furniture all day, I feel like. So that's up to about, if, if I did the math correctly, about $370,000 for the needs for that. Right, and between the COVID and the contingencies, we're at about 561, so it seems to be well within. Yeah. Yeah, it does. And, and you know, again, we don't seem to know a lot of it. We don't have a lot of details on this, but the news about the potential reimbursement for facilities is, is good news for us. So, so some of that five, some of that money that we're, we're making sure we have just in, um, might actually also be able to be reimbursed <clears throat> for those portables, I understand, and the, the furniture and things like that, potentially. Yep. Okay. And if you had to add in furniture for that, for those portables, um, from what I can tell from the purchasers that are coming through, between seven and $14,000 for an order. I just have a question yeah. about um, if the news is good and, and we don't wind up using um, as much of the contingency as we, you know, we may, it's, it's, a, it's a big question mark at this moment. Um, would that go back into um, 
building up our fund balance again. Um, yes, and you know, also Elizabeth, we had talked about um, one thought that by next spring at this time, I could also come to you as the board and ask you if you wanted to use any remaining contingencies to pay the school nutrition, nutrition deficit. Yeah, right. And yeah, I, right. I, I yep. can do that with a board approval. Yep. Great. Um, I know that's not the conversation at hand <laughs> um, because uh, I don't know. I'm actually, I, I, I actually would really like to stick with the, uh, the original. We're not the mm -hmm. original. The original is not what I want to stick with at all. <laughs> the, the original uh, from as of yesterday. The original, original as of yesterday. I love to see that taxpayer burden reduced. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you exactly identified my thoughts around, you know, let's do what we can for the taxpayers, especially as the potential for going for a bond is coming up soon. And it seems like we will have at least close to or within what we need and then the the very real possibility of some more funds for facilities so that's kind of where I'm at but I'm thinking even ahead to if we don't use that all that contingency funding how can we you know pay down the debt pump up the fund balance those sorts of things right right yeah thanks any other board members have thoughts about that Well, I guess I'll just go then and I'll say I agree with you. I did want to just suss this out publicly, though, um, you know, just to make sure we were comfortable with the fund balance and that this was the best way to do it. But I, my, my gut really was we need to, this is a good budget. I think it's a good budget because I, we are, uh, we're going to, we're going to reduce the taxpayer impact here, but we're also funding everything that was identified. I know it was, I know it was um, targeted this year and, um, you know, in terms of what we needed, but we're, we've been able to accommodate everything, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'll have, you know, math interventionists at all three schools. We'll have a full-time sub at the elementary school, um, which I think is gonna help with this time as well as some other identified needs. So we get, so that is happening at the same time. I think, you know, we could show that this is a pretty skinny budget um, in terms of the taxpayers impact. And it doesn't, um, and Mike is clear, this is something I talked with Marcy about how we present this future. It does not include any COVID money in this budget. That $207,000 is outside of the budget. Um, so this is not being reduced in any way um, through extra subsidy. So that, that that's, yeah, that's where I am too, Elizabeth. I just wanted to have, I want to make sure the board was all on the same page on that. I have just a random question, Donna. If we didn't, let's say we don't need the <clears throat> 214 toward like any sort of portables, we're able to make it work, CDC guidelines change. I know we we definitely do not have a crystal ball. Um, what would we use that money toward? What other COVID sort of relief do you think the schools need? Uh, probably a big chunk of it would go to technology. Right now we have, um, uh, I don't even know how many whiteboards there are sitting up in Pond Cove waiting to be installed. And we've been holding off on that um, installation um, to find out what's happening with our money. But um, do you know how many there are, Jason? There are- 45. <laughs> oh, thanks, Noel. <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you, Noel. <laughs> He's there. <laughs> That was perfect. Um, and also there's a big question mark about Milty and what's going to happen with that funding that we still don't have answers to. So that is a huge question mark about um, our ability to continue our um, rotation on devices and continually um, updating our devices and adding new devices in. So I would say that it's go, we go to technology. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that, Noel? <laughs> uh, I like that. I, I just wanna remind everybody that in, uh, what we've done uh, since, uh, since my tenure was always try to get the most of every single technology device that, uh, that we um, bought. And typically what we do is we, we make sure that the high school is taken care of first and seventh and eighth grade are taken care of first. And then we kind of float down the uh, older devices to Pond Cove, not because we don't like them. It's just the fact that 
and they really don't need the, the newest and greatest. But what's happened this year is because all the devices gone home, they've all been old devices. So there really is a, um, a really big question mark with that, with Milky, not quite sure what's going to happen. Um, so I, I agree, we really need to really focus, hopefully um, in the coming year, uh, coming the next year on technology. Thank you, Noah. Great. That's really what we have to talk about, quite frankly. Is there, I mean, I think it seems like we're arriving at a, at a budget here. We'll have a more, you know, we'll have a discussion in public comment next week at our, at our school board meeting on it. But I just want to make sure there's anything else. If anyone has any questions about the administrators for specific line items? Oh, we have some hands. Good. Cindy. <laughs> I, I just want to follow up. Uh, I know we decided <laughs> at the last meeting to go back for the short term loan and to talk with the the town about the loan. I don't know if there was any update on that. Um, any new information since we Marcy, last? Good question. Good question. Yeah, Marcy. Yeah. You're muted, Marcy. Yeah. Can't hear you. Oh, you're really low. You're actually not muted, but it's somehow really low. Barely. <laughs> Barely. There's something wrong with the All voice. Right. Yeah. You can go out and come back in again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> While we're waiting for Marcy, I just have a little, um, I don't know if it's advice or request, but before you present this budget to town council and to the public, um, make sure you have um, Matt Sturgis and John Q run this all through their pro forma because our tax rate will actually decrease. And so it's really important um, and good yes. <laughs> to get that out there yes. um, because it, it does change and it, it goes down. Great. Yes. Yep. Good advice. Okay, I'm, yep. I'm back. Sorry, I'm in. We can that. hear you. <laughs> yeah, we can hear you though. Okay, great. So, yes, it's a very good news that we um, have going forward at the next town council meeting, which is next Monday night, the 12th. And they are considering and they're voting on the $300,000, it's called a bond order, it's for short-term financing. And um, our bond council has written this bond order that the town council will be considering in two forms. It will be considered either as a way that they're going to uh, self-finance for us, or we can also have the option to have short-term financing through a bank. So that's being considered Monday night at town council. And so fingers crossed, everything will go smoothly. But at this point, it seems like everything is going along and um, I'll make sure I'm there. John Q has it handled. He's, he's told me I can be there if I want to, but he has it definitely handled for us um, with the town council meeting. So that looks like, Cindy, that that's going to go along just great. Great, thank you. Yeah. And, and just so you know, Marcy had also prepared a letter that Heather and I signed formally requesting that to be uh, for the town council, so they have that from us as well. Uh, Kimberly has her hand up. Sorry, I switched devices. I couldn't find my mute. Um, I, um, I was curious about that as well. So thank you for that update, Marcy. Um, and yeah, I think I, I'm in favor of um, the 4.8% expenditure increase. I think it's it's a win-win taking care of our needs on the school side and um, and it's a conservative budget um, that's sensitive to the taxpayers. So I'm, um, I'm in support of that. Um, and I just had a question on the um, health insurance um, Peace, Marcy, is there anything um, that was in our control that reduced the um, increase and, you know, anything that might be able to be repeatable going forward? No, it's um, unfortunately it's done through MEA benefits, but I think that overall statewide, we all just lucked out in um, low attendance. Now, I don't know if that's a really good thing or a bad thing, but there were uh, low rates of incidence of needing to use the um, healthcare system. And I think that's part of the formula that goes into it, but um, that's that's our guess. That's, uh, I was talking to Cynthia, who is our human resources manager, and she, that was her best 
um, guess on what was happening too with that. And a little bit of luck. <laughs> so. Great. Um, well, thank you. I was hoping it was something that we could um, continue repeat next year. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Great. Anyone, anyone else? Okay, I think um, I think we do. You have the direction you need, Donna and Marcy, to for next week from us. Yeah, we do. Thank well, you. thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much for all the work you've done, and everyone on the committee and the administrators. This has been a good process, I think. And um, yeah, I think this is we only needed a half an hour tonight. All right. <laughs> okay. Unless anyone has anything else, last last chance. Last chance. Okay. I'm here. Well, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Well, thank you again. And we'll see you uh, next week and maybe sooner in some cases. Okay. 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 Bye, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.